If you're interested in using Stable Diffusion to create amazing AI-generated images similar to the ones you're seeing on screen right now, but not sure where to start, then this tutorial is perfect for you. The first thing you're going to have to do is go to the stability.ai website. There will be a sign-up page for Stable Diffusion. It is only open for about the next 24 hours, so the time to act is now. Eventually, you will be sent an email with a link to the official Stable Diffusion Discord server. Once you're in the Discord server and have access to the bot, navigate to one of the Dream channels, and this is where you will type in your prompts for the bot to generate images for. So, the absolute most important thing to know is the Dream command. You're going to want to type exclamation point Dream, just like that. Type in a space, and after that, put in whatever prompt you want to see. Let's say your dream is seeing Steve Harvey riding a motorcycle during a sunset. Then press enter. You will get a ping from the bot, and the bot will start generating the image for you. If you're just generating one image, then it'll take maybe five seconds. And look at that. We already have the image. The bot will paste the image in the channel you use. You see there's a lot of them you can choose from. And it'll show you the image right here. And look at that. You can clearly tell this is Steve Harvey. This is a motorcycle and it is a sunset. Very nicely done. Now, I would say the most important commands for new users to know are dash N and dash G. So let me show you how that would work. So let's say we want to see Steve Harvey riding a motorcycle during a sunset. We want to see the same prompt we saw before, but say we want to have multiple images of it generate at a time. We're going to type dash, then the letter N. See what this guy just did. He put the number nine afterwards. And you can do whatever number you want, one through nine. Let's see, let's say we only want three images. Then we press enter. The bot will start thinking. Because we're asking for more images at once, it'll take a little bit longer. Or maybe not. Maybe there's been an update. Five seconds and we have three images of Steve Harvey riding a motorcycle at sunset. Isn't that cool? <laughs> he's, he's, even, he's even got shorts on in this image right here. How often do you see Steve Harvey wearing shorts? But yeah, simple as that. Um, let's say you want all of these images to be together in like a grid-like pattern. Because right now, they're all individual images you could copy and put elsewhere, right? So, the next important thing for new users to know, let's say, let's just do something simple. Blue bowling ball. And we want all these images to be in a grid together. So we're going to have to do dash n and however many we want. If it's a grid, we want it to be even, so it'll, it'll be either 2x2 two two or 3x3. Three three. So I'll do 2x2 two two with four images. Type another space and dash G. Dash G stands for grid. It'll tell the bot when generating these images to put the final outputs together as one whole image. And you'll see this very shortly. In fact, way quicker than I ever expected it to be. It used to be that when you were generating multiple images, it would take extra time. Like if you're generating the max nine images, it would take like 50 seconds. But this only took almost nine seconds. And looky here. We have a grid of four different attempts of the bot to generate a blue bowling ball, all one image. Very important to know for new users. It's the way to get the most out of the bot. I'm not sure if this is still true, but when you first join, uh, there may be a slow mode effect for the channels. So if you want to get the most images per generation, then you're going to want to do your prompt, let's just say blue bowling ball again, dash N and the number nine the most images you can get from one generation. So you'll get nine images at once and uh, get the most out of your prompt. So we'll just let this generate right here. And as you can see, um, it's somewhat annoying having everyone else's generations happening at the same time. Like this guy generated nuclear powdered, powered toothpaste. That's actually kind of interesting. But uh, eventually you'll be able to like DM the bot or just use an external source so people can't see your images. But here we go, nine images of a blue bowling ball. This one even has a little kid in it. Isn't that cool? So yeah, most important stuff to know if you're a new Stable Diffusion user is exclamation, exclamation point dream and then type in your prompt afterwards. 
then a dash n and a number to get a certain amount of images from the bot and dash g is optional if you want to make those images into a grid pattern. Those are the most important commands for new users to know. One other command you can use to change the size of images that new users might find interesting is dash w and dash h. So you can see right here, if you do exclamation point dream and dash h, it will pull up a help menu with all the commands you can use. A little bit confusing with all this uh, text right here, but it's something you can do if you want a little more information. So let's say we want an image of thunderstorm over a desert, but we want it to be wider than normal. Something to know is every image that is generated by the bot by default will be 512 pixels by 512, perfect square. So if we want to just change the width of that image, we'll do dash W and then put in, let's say 768. As of now, the bot can only change the size of the image in uh, measurements of 64, I believe. So you can't do like 777, unfortunately, but there's still a lot of variation here. So we'll press enter and you'll see once the image generates, it may take a little bit more time because stable diffusion does struggle a little bit with different aspect ratios. But once it generates, you'll see it won't be a perfect square. And look at that. It's a thunderstorm over a desert. And it has, if you were to count every pixel, 768 in the width. So if you want wallpapers and stuff, you can change the aspect ratio to be 16 by nine or whatever. So pretty useful to know. Same thing goes with the height. I'll go ahead and demonstrate that here. Let's just do yacht on a cloud. Just something crazy random. Let's crank this up a bit. Let's do 1024. So this image once generated, it'll be twice the size high as it is wide. So kind of a funky looking image. I'm interested to know how Stable Diffusion is gonna generate this, but um, just a demonstration of this bot's powers. So as you can see here, it didn't quite get the prompt and it generated two of them. This is something else important to know, um, is that when you crank up the height and the width of images, as of now, this probably will be fixed in later versions, probably very soon, It'll sometimes generate two of the same image. And as you can see here, we have two yachts and I didn't ask for two yachts. It just gave them to me, but this will probably be fixed in later uh, versions. A way to combat this is just use um, lower resolutions. Like you could crank down the width and keep the height at 512 and then you could fix this problem. So something to keep in mind there. And um, yeah, those, th that's pretty uh, useful for new users because I know a lot of people, including myself, want to make epic wallpapers with the stuff that uh, this program can generate. So if you want a specific aspect ratio, just remember dash W and then a number to change the width and dash H with a number to change the height. If you're interested, I can make a video about some of the more complex commands like editing the steps and the CFG scale and what it means when each image has a seed. But as of now, these are some of the most basic commands and stuff you need to know when generating images with stable diffusion. Enjoy!